the No Fate channel, checking in. On this episode of Dad's Home Gym, I'm not reviewing a piece of home gym equipment like I typically do. Today, we are talking about the best way to refurbish old home gym equipment, to put right what once went wrong. And it is so important and nowadays for two main reasons that you know how to refurbish old gym equipment. Number one is that if you have gym equipment in your home, it's just getting older. And oftentimes that gym equipment is still highly functional, still as good as the day you bought it, but it does get nicks and cuts and tears and rust. And that's why it's so important that you know how to keep it tip top and in shape and ready to roll so that you don't have to shell out that hard earned money for new home gym equipment. And the second reason that you're going to want to know how to refurbish old gym equipment is frankly, the used market is popping off. So many people try to be resellers and now that the gyms are open and now that inventory for regular sellers is up and fully in stock, a lot of those Facebook marketplace people are just unloading everything they have at a song. Also, a lot of people have been upgrading their home gym and then getting rid of their old stuff at a song. So it's a good way for you to be able to pick up used home gym equipment cheap, knowing that full well that you can revitalize that home gym equipment. Today, I have two 85 pound dumbbells that are super old, but they're good quality dumbbells. They weigh 85 pounds and the knurling is all the way through. These are solid dumbbells that just have a little bit of rust on them. And unfortunately, a lot of the surface area that the black coating has just been worn out through pain and gain. So today we're gonna remove the rust. We are gonna coat them up. We're gonna refurbish them and we are gonna make these bad boys just as good as new. But full disclosure, how did I get these? I bought them off a of Facebook marketplace. I got two 85 pound dumbbells for $70. So I paid less than 50 cents a pound for these bad boys. It was a steal. I couldn't pass them up and they are almost perfectly straight, almost no issues with them whatsoever. One is slightly bent, but you really have to look to you to see it. And frankly, when you pick it up, you don't even feel it. So the first step we're gonna do is to get these things rust free and as good a condition as we can before we apply the paint. As far as removing rust, the best thing to remove rust and the easiest thing is vinegar. You can also add a little bit of table salt to it to improve um, the effectiveness. If you've ever done that, like clearing, uh, pe cleaning pennies with your kids, that science experiment, salt and vinegar does tend to work well because of the chemical reaction that occurs between the salt and the vinegar. Also, if you have a, if you're making a large bath in order to remove that rust, you can actually still use iron out, which tends to be a bit more practical when trying to fill up a large area like this, rather than having to dump in gallons and gallons of vinegar. One third of a cup of this can be mixed with one gallon of water. Also, if you have gym equipment that can't be moved or can't be submerged like these dumbbells, you can actually make a paste of this and put it on that gym equipment and then remove it some hours later. Now we're gonna mix up a batch of this good stuff. Tomorrow. One of the nice things about setting up a bath like this is that if you do have a lot of stuff that is in need of rust removal, you can actually save this and reuse it. It's still going to be good for some time later or just tomorrow when I dump that dumbbell in here. But let's pull this out with all my might and see what we've got. You can see in this clear side-by-side -side comparison, remember these were identical 85 pound dumbbells that had the same exact rust patterns on them, the same exact age, the same exact everything, that this one is devoid, removed of rust. It was in the bath of vinegar, salt, and iron out for less than 24 hours. We pulled it out, 
rubbed it down nice and hard with this steel wool and then dried it off. And you can absolutely see that all of the rust has been removed. This is a great place to start for refurbishing this dumbbell. Our next step is going to be twofold. Number one, wash this down to clear off any type of residual um, film from the bath off of it, dry it up completely, and then we will be able to prime it and paint it and basically put it back into rotation in the home gym. So as you can see, we removed all of the rust and they look completely different than before. And if you look closely, you'll see that I actually taped the handles. The handles looked absolutely perfect with almost no rust on them. And frankly, I think they're stainless steel. So I am not gonna to attempt to paint those, but we do need to paint over the rest of the bare steel that we have here. Otherwise, it will quickly re-rust. As we all know, rust doesn't sleep. But before we can put the paint, we actually have to prime them. We need to be able to have something for the paint to stick to. And that's why you really want to take your time and do this primer as a first coat. So one thing that I have actually found to be extremely useful when applying spray paint has been this little trigger gun here. And what that allows me to do is to simply not put too much paint uh, on it once by using that trigger to kind of feather that paint on. So I'm going to stir this up and I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the spray paint, just with the paintbrush. I'm going to do two coats on the top, flip it over and do two other coats. Um, and eventually when it's all said and done, that most of these sides are going to have the equivalent of three coats and only these tops and the bottoms are going to have two coats. Um, hopefully that should be uh, good enough to hold up to any type of wear and tear I have when um, using them in my home gym. But since it's not a local gym, it's not going to be used very often, probably, you know, a couple times a week, as opposed to 20 or 30 times a day. I think this is going to hold up very, very well. And this does come in other colors rather than black, but I wanted to stick with the black just to kind of have that generic dumbbell look of black ends with the, with the stainless steel handle. So I've got the finished product here and I think it came out pretty good, but I could have certainly done a better job. So in terms of a wrap up, I want to talk about what went right, what went wrong, and then what I would have done better to help you not make the same mistakes that I did. So what went right was obviously removing the rust. That actually went better than I thought. I think definitely a complete soak of these dumbbells was key and doing it for a long period of time, 24 plus hours. Um, that actually went better than I ever thought it could. Unfortunately, what went wrong was the temperature. Up, up here in New England, it's still fairly cold in the morning and the evening, and the, it's just damp in, in general because we've been getting rain. So when I went to prime these and paint these, they were taking a lot longer to dry than I ever thought possible. And one of the things I did wrong was I left the dumbbells like this in order to spray paint them, thinking that I would get you know a really good coating on them before I flipped them over, which did happen. Unfortunately, I didn't give them long enough to dry so that even though they were dry to the touch and they would dry to pick up, when I flipped them over and let them sit on the opposite side, they were still not completely hardened. And so if I did it again, what I would do is leave the dumbbells like this and I would either put a block underneath them or a piece of wood, allowing me to spray paint the whole thing at once, leaving it off the ground where the only thing that was actually touching something was going to be the handle and that was taped up and I wasn't going to spray paint that anyway. That would allow me to kind of spray paint these and then if I had a long enough block I could just roll it a little bit forward to get the certain sides and then roll it a little bit back and then none of the sides would touch and it would also dry a lot quicker. Also I would certainly give each coat regardless if it was primer or paint one day fully to dry. Ideally I would either do this inside a garage where it wasn't going to get moist and it would dry a little bit quicker and I could put a fan on it or I would do it when I knew there was going to be tons of, of heat and sun available uh, depending on the time of the year. The other thing that went wrong was the Rust-Oleum paint. Now I happen to think it's a really good paint. It dries super hard when it's finally said and done but it is a thick paint and it's hard to get 
um, a really light coat on here. And that really compounded with the fact that things were taking so long to dry. And even though they looked dry and they were dry to the touch, they just weren't completely dry. And that caused a lot of errors. And you can see if you look really closely, this it's probably not as smooth as I would like it. So where I would, again, use that Rust-Oleum paint in the future, making sure to use very thin coats and making sure to let it completely dry 24, if not longer, hours between coats. If you're a person that's not good with the paintbrush, if you're a person that's in a bit more of a rush, certainly use a Rust-Oleum spray paint because you're going to get a much thinner coat. It is obviously going to dry a lot quicker. Now, in terms of the stenciling with regards to the 85s, I made two mistakes with regards to that. Number one, the paint itself wasn't dry. So when I went to go do the stenciling with an oil brush like a Sharpie, um, it just dug into the paint and actually made it worse. The second thing is, for some reason, I've never had any good luck with stencils. I know some people are really good. They can just do a, a spray paint stencil that comes out perfectly. Uh, you can use those oil-based markers for Sharpies. I happen to think that those probably work better on a raised surface like uh, a plate that actually has like beveled numbering. So you're just kind of coloring that, coloring in the raised surface, giving it more of a pop, making it easier to not screw up like I did. Um, and unfortunately that, that screw up really had me make, forced me to put an extra coat on here to cover it up. So because I knew I had, didn't have good luck with stencilings, I just got stickers. It's obviously a lot easier and you can get some really good quality stickers that shine, that pop. I just got these on Amazon for like eight bucks. I got a whole set. Um, and I happen to think these are actually going to last a fairly long time in terms of the stickers because they're decent quality, but I'm most, more likely than not going to have these dumbbells in this position. So you're not going to see a lot of wear and tear on these ends. Uh, overall, if I did it again, I would certainly try to wait for warmer weather and even be more patient than I tried to be this time around. But Obviously, this is a good proof of concept if you have old dumbbells, if you have old kettlebells, if you have old plates or even barbells, there is a way to refurbish them to get them back to as close to new condition as possible. So don't shy away from trying to fix up your old equipment to make it feel like new. And don't shy away from buying used equipment if it just doesn't look pretty because oftentimes you can get a really good deal and with a little bit of elbow grease and, and foresight, you can make them look really, really good and be proud of the dumbbells that you have at your own home. Hopefully you found this video informative. Obviously I wish it had come out better, but certainly looks better than when I started. If you came this far in the video, please drop any questions in the comments below. And obviously give this video a like, hit that subscribe button. It's appreciated. It helps out the channel more than you realize. And it's probably the only way that this channel grows is from people like you liking, commenting, and sharing it with your friends. As usual, thank you for watching and don't save anything for the trip back. This channel is dedicated to my life as a father of two wonderful children and it centers around health, fitness, and all of the tricks and tribulations that I go through to try to be a great parent to my children and still accomplish my own personal goals.